Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we're discussing the anatomy of the middle ear and guess what the concept is quite intense so you definitely might want to sit back not relax and maybe we might just enjoy ourselves a little bit So what is the middle ear exactly we've already discussed up to the tympanic membrane and if you haven't watched those videos I highly recommend you to go check them out now let's get started with what's the story behind the tympanic membrane and is this membrane that was the boundary line between external and middle ear finally we've broken through that membrane damaged the pars flaccida and the corda tympani and finally we've entered our middle ear now middle ears other name is the tympanic cavity The tympanic cavity is divided into two parts the tympanic cavity proper and the epitympanic recess so what is the tympanic cavity proper so let's suppose this is the tympanic membrane right here the issue with the middle ear is that the medial and lateral walls are quite large and it's compressed like that from side to side therefore the medial lateral wall are quite large so i've tried to be a little creative and made this demonstration of the box that is going to be our middle ear today to show you is that you can see this is the lateral wall and the medial wall they're quite large all right and this uh, ear is compressed like that so these two walls are large rest of the walls are quite small so here you can see this is your tympanic cavity the area that lies just in front of this tympanic membrane is known as the tympanic cavity proper whereas all the rest of the area in the uh, middle ear is known as the epitympanic recess makes quite a lot of sense right but here's the difficult part and that is what are the boundaries of the middle ear So as I already mentioned your middle ear cavity can be imagined in the form of a cube here is that cube cube or the middle ear cavity basically has a roof a floor anterior wall posterior wall medial wall and lateral wall you can see here we are going to be talking about the boundaries of the middle ear what these walls are actually formed of if you look up there is one god if you look down there are two legs so just like that the roof has one content The floor has two important contents: anterior wall, three contents, and posterior wall has four contents. The medial and lateral wall, we're going to talk about them in a while. But first, let's talk about these walls. And just to clear the air, the lateral wall of the middle ear is obviously the area which is the tympanic membrane, which is connecting it to the external ear. Whereas the medial wall is actually the wall that is connecting your middle ear to the internal ear that is lying next to the medial wall makes complete sense because that's how you're going from lateral to medial direction your external ear then middle ear then inner ear so therefore these two walls are basically made of those important places from where the sound has to come and the where the sound has to be transmitted so i've got some techniques you can use that you can memorize these the first thing is the roof the roof is known as a tegmental wall the roof is basically going to be lined by a bone called the tegment tympani the tegment tympani is basically a part of the temporal bone that you can see in the cranial cavity if you watch one of those videos now interestingly in uh, children the roof uh, where the tegment tympani lies over there there is this fissure called the petrosquamous fissure now that petrosquamous fissure in us adults is usually ossified it's formed and there's nothing that is leaking outside of it nothing going within it it's completely normal but in children this hasn't been ossified because that suture hasn't been ossified in children in children if there is any ear infection it can easily enter your brain because this roof is the only barrier you have from your brain you tegment tympani completely separating your middle ear from the brain because over here starts your brain in adults this petrosquamous fissure basically transmits a vein that leads to the superior petrosal sinus this is a very important part make sure you remember it so there is one content we have the tegment tympani now let's go to the floor formed by two contents right so the first content basically over here lies a vein called the internal jugular vein so here we have the floor the floor is known as the jugular wall because there is a thin thin plate of bone of the temporal bone that is separating the middle ear from the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein that is content number 1 there is another content called the tympanic canaliculus this holds the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve so this is a tympanic canaliculus that is lying in the floor let's talk about the anterior wall it is supposed to have three content going my face is lying anteriorly right so this has to be something that's going into your nose all right so in the anterior wall is where our auditory tube is going to lie and it is going to connect your middle ear cavity to the nasopharynx if you remember it open in the lateral wall of the nasopharynx so there is an auditory tube above it there is a canal for the tensor tympani muscle you know that muscle that was tensing up the tympanic membrane kept it in a concavity which caused it to remain tense that muscle was coming from the canal of the tensor tympani which was lying just above the auditory tube now remember one thing between the canal for the tensor tympani and the auditory tube there is this bony septum 
this bony septum goes on to the medial wall and there it forms a curved lamina this is known as the processus co cochleari formis importance of this is that the tensor tympani muscle will will wrap around this and form use it as a pulley and go and attach to the tympanic membrane on the lateral wall otherwise the tensor tympani muscle would just go shoot up in the sky for that we need the processus cochleari formis that will bring it back to earth and will take it to where it belongs which is the tympanic membrane not high up in the sky then we've talked about two contents but we have to complete the three so the third content is, is that the internal carotid artery lies about over here so there's a thin plate of bone separating internal carotid artery from the middle ear and that is your third content let's talk about the posterior wall now the posterior wall has four contents and i'm sure you're quite overwhelmed by the fact four already these were so hard even th one was so hard so guys i have made this uh, interesting uh, situation so that you can remember the wall uh, posterior wall contents all you have to do is basically understand that the posterior wall will have all of the different things that can occur in your bones an opening the posterior wall has a fossa the posterior wall has a projection and finally the posterior wall has a canal all right so the posterior wall goes like i am not like other bones i want to be the jack of all trades i want to have all those fossas all those canals you talk about yeah give me all of them the first thing that the uh, posterior wall has and very important is the opening called the aditus all right the opening of the aditus is basically going to lead to your posterior part of the temporal bone which is the mastoid bone and within the mastoid bone there is a space area which contains air cells so mastoid antrum is that space that contains the air cell and entering the mastoid antrum it is going to be through this aditus which lies on the superior part of the posterior wall makes sense so first thing you know is aditus so opening done next it has this fossa fossa is usually where because something has to go and put their process inside of it right so in this case it is known as the fossa incutis the incus bone which is the ossicle of the middle ear is going to have its process within this fossa incutis all right next thing that the posterior wall has is this projection this projection you can see it is in the form of a pyramid so this conical projection is known as a pyramid what's the point of it the stapedius muscle which is going to the stapes bone is going to wrap around it and go to the stapedius the next going below is finally the canal it the canal is basically located lateral to the pyramid this canal is lying in the posterior wall what could it be called obviously it is known as the posterior canaliculus and that is for the corda tympani nerve now what is the corda tympani nerve it is that nerve that transmits taste sensation from the anterior two thirds of the tongue and also gives submandibular sublingual supply to your salivary glands part of the facial now let's talk about medial and lateral walls i figure out the lateral wall then i'll give you a very good uh, way to study the medial wall because medial wall is going to get a little complicated so the lateral wall we always a tympanic membrane i just want you to add a little bit above the tympanic membrane is the squamous part of the temporal bone add that to the mix and do one more thing if there is a posterior canaliculus where are we going to find the anterior canaliculus right here in the lateral wall and that is because you know tympanic membrane lies there and i already mentioned behind the pars flaccida lies your corda tympani so the corda tympani there is it's a mystery obviously the corda tympani is passing through the lateral wall for a reason because the anterior canaliculus lies in the lateral wall so tympanic membrane we all remember was uh, all around attached to the tympanic sulcus and there was a tympanic notch which was deficient superiorly right so in that tympanic notch i want to remember there are two apertures one aperture is the anterior canaliculus for the corda tympani and another aperture transmits the tympanic branch of the maxillary artery this is very important exam question so do remember that let's talk about the medial wall now since the medial wall is going to connect your middle ear to the inner ear it says i'm going to be a tough nut to crack and that is going to be an issue for us today let's do this first thing i want you to do is make a window because obviously it's only through a window that you can enter a place or you can communicate with a place that is not your own windows are just communication areas like i don't want to be a part of you like i don't want any baggage but i just want to see you through the window you know the first window in the inner ear is going to be the oval window all right so i want you to draw an oval window then i want you to draw a projection and then i want you to draw another window called the round window so that's how it goes first oval window then the round window and between them is the projection and then i want you to remember for the medial wall two prominences i want you to remember this mnemonic called vpc fsc keep repeating that because now the medial wall is about to become super easy the oval window has a name it it isn't just called the oval window it's like i need a reputation too i have an ego too give me a name so therefore the name of the oval window is known as the fenestra vestibuli why do we call it that it is that fenestra that is connecting your middle ear to the vestibule of the inner ear and then comes your projection this is the promontory what is the promontory your cochlea is uh, kind of like a snail literally like a snail i'm not even kidding the first coil of the cochlea you can see this is a coil this is the medial wall this is what's happening 
oil is going to form a projection in the medial wall known as the promontory. And finally, a round window is known as the fenestra cochlea. And that is because the cochlea scala tympani is going to be lying here and it's just going to communicate with that through the round window. FSE, there are two prominences you will see within your medial wall. One will be of the facial canal and the second will be of the semicircular canal. Which one? The lateral semicircular canal prominence is going to be lying here. So basically the semicircular canal, one is the anterior, one goes posterior and one is the lateral. The lateral will be forming a prominence on your medial wall. F is for the prominence of the facial canal. So overall, these were all the boundaries of your middle ear cavity. Really hope they made sense and they were easy. The contents of the middle ear include the ear bones, which are the ossicles, which go from the malleus incus stapes. The malleus is hammer shaped and then we have the incus and we have the stapes. Stapes is basically going to be lying at that oval window. All the sound that is coming is going to make the tympanic membrane vibrate and then it's going to make the malleus incus stapes vibrate. And finally, when the stapes vibrate, its foot plate causes the oval window to vibrate and the inner ear will process all those signals and take them to the vestibular cochlear nerve. So the only two muscles that lie within the middle ear as, as a part of its contents are the tensor tympani and the stapedius. And we've talked about them before. The tensor tympani is basically going to originate from that canal of the tensor tympani and it's just going to go insert and do the handle of the malleus so that it can keep pushing the tympanic membrane to make it tense. It's going to be supplied by the mandibular nerve and then the stapedius. The stapedius is basically going to get inserted in the neck of the stapes. It is going to be supplied by the facial nerve. Please make sure you remember that because I'm about to tell you some clinical. Now here's the deal. Before I talk about the clinicals, I want you to know that the mastoid antrum that we saw in the posterior wall, that mastoid antrum directly behind it lies your sigmoid ear sinus. If you can remember that, now we can start with the clinical. Middle ear, if there is an infection, it is known as the otitis media. The communications of the middle ear are super important because Every infection is going to be transmitted through those openings, obviously. Let's suppose this is uh, representing an infection. There's an infection in the middle ear. It will cause erosion of the roof. If the roof is eroded, what do you think will happen? Infection will spread to the meninges and even to the brain. So that is actually quite dangerous. Therefore, ear infection should be taken seriously. Not just that, within the posterior wall lies your mastoid uh, aditus. And in the mastoid antrum, if this infection goes, we all know the sigmoid sinus is lying here. So it can cause the thrombosis of the sigmoid sinus and not just that, it can cause an abscess in the mastoid bone. Another communication is this anterior wall, the auditory tube, all right? So the infection can easily travel to the nasopharynx or even infection from the nasopharynx can transmit into the middle ear. Overall, if you, we talk about the communication, it is like a gun. The gun's handle is made up of mastoid antrum. Aditus is the connector. This is the, tympa the entire middle ear cavity. And part of the gun which runs uh, ahead of the entire gun anteriorly that part is formed by the auditory tube and the trigger of the gun is the tympanic membrane and just the tympanic cavity proper if there is erosion of the floor then the internal jugular vein that was lying there it may undergo thrombosis since the stapedius muscle is being supplied by the facial nerve if there is damage to the facial nerve because stapes is responsible for uh, dampening your sound decreasing the sound a little bit so it doesn't get too loud all right out of control loud if stapes is doing that and the facial nerve is injured and now the stapedius muscle is inactive and stapes is not doing its function correctly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think if you say a small word, it might pop my eardrums, right? So basically it's known as hyperacusis. Sounds will be heard super loud if there is any damage to facial nerve. If there's any fracture to the roof, it will result in CSF leakage through the ear. And if there's a mastoid abscess, usually what the surgeons do, they uh, operate it through the supramural triangle. And I've talked about the supramural triangle in my normal lateralis video. That's the approach they use. And through the supramural triangle, uh, they have to be very careful to not injure the facial nerve. So with that comes an end to our middle ear topic. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.